Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and we are back with another exciting episode of Silent Hunter 5. Ah, uh, we've already heard all your jokes and your news. Thanks, Dieter. Uh, so, where we last left off, um, trying to figure out just where exactly the actual mission location for this mission is. Uh, sinking ships in this circle didn't really appear to do anything, and sinking ships by Freetown didn't really do anything either. So I'm thinking we're just going to have to go down and sink ships in that circle. Which seems like a good idea to me. So then why am I going to Dakar? Well, for the resupply. Uh, I have a feeling we've got enough fuel to get down there. And then we can just load up on torpedoes. Because we've spent through a few. In fact, let's um, get these guys in while we're on the surface. Nice and safe. And that is actually going fairly quickly for the one times speed acceleration that we're going on. It looks like we'll have four shots up front, one out the rear, and uh, that should be enough armaments to get us to Dakar. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not sure if you can tell, but my throat is still feeling a little tickly. As if that's even a thing. A tickly throat. Um... But yeah, the cold is kind of making a comeback, which I don't appreciate. But what can you do about it? Nothing. That's what. Anyway, now that we've got on personal health and mission goals, I just have one thing to say. Um, I don't even know why I'm going to say it, but my headset, certainly something's going on with it. In fact, give me a moment. Let me check the plug. It's fine. Um out here that sound <laughs> the sound of the um of the sea i guess or the whatever it is i don't really know what it is i can't tell you what it is because it sounds like static on a tv uh yes, dieter sir. is coming in okay but just with a pretty big echo kind of sounds like everything's a little bit underwater makes sense for a submarine sim i guess although we're on the surface um but i think ultimately this is just a sign that it's time for me to finally invest in a better headset which is sad. But, hey, all good things must come to an end, and I didn't really enjoy this headset to begin with anyway. So, now that I'm done rambling, jambling on about nothing, uh, we'll get back to actually showing you guys some fun and exciting things, which is not staring at a map, uh, unless, you know, you're also a fan of my grand strategy titles, like, you know, Crusader Kings 2, Europa Universalis 4, things like that, then perhaps... This is what you're missing. Well, I think that's long enough staring at a map in this game for now. So, uh, yeah, if that was what you're missing, I hope you enjoyed a little taste of, you know, the different styles of games that I play. Anyway, I'm really running out of things to say, so I'm just going to be back when I've got something exciting to show you guys. See you in a bit. And it did not take long. Um, you know, we moved... A little bit and yes, lo sir. and behold there's a freighter there so let's man the deck gun um, let me make sure Woohoo! maybe don't man the deck gun maybe let's just dive under shall we seems like a good idea regardless while we're here and yes I realize we're not under yet and I'm using the periscope sue me I don't know what you would sue me for, but, you know, go right ahead. <clears throat> we might as well, you know, get a shot off on this guy while we can. While he's damaging our submarine, it sounds like. Yeah, we got some hull integrity issues. So, uh, what we're not going to be doing is going to Dakar. Come on. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Okay, so we're successfully under, and I missed my shot. That sounds about right for me. Although, really, if we put it behind, like I say, it should come out even for us. Because that yellow line is where the the thing's going to be, the torpedo. So if it's behind, <clears throat> right? Oh, screw it. 
I can't think clearly enough right now to actually make that work. And besides, we'll probably get a better shot with our rear facing tube anyway. Or just ignore the shot completely. I mean, we could do that. And I think we'll do that. We've we've taken enough hits from this guy. I think we'll just head to L'Oreal and get ourselves refit, burn some time on the clock that we can't really afford to spend, and um, then we can head down south. All right, so we'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so the tinny quality of my speakers is actually fitting for right now, considering we are underwater and we're stuck in a submarine, and there is, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15-ish, maybe 16 military-only contacts on our hydrophone. So I just want to take a look, scan around, and, um, you know, how about we position that so that's going to be useful. I'm just going to make sure that we're safe. Uh, I'm underwater. I submerged because, you know, I don't want to face 15 warships in a single submarine with four torpedoes. The odds are not stacked with us. But it certainly looks like we're clear and free. Uh, it certainly looks like, though, that the, the, the Royal Navy is stepping up patrols off the coast of Europe. <clears throat> So that's going to be a bit of a pain. Uh, but we do, these guys are popping up more and more frequently. Little convoys of submarines. I haven't actually visually seen one yet. It's just really been uh, hydrophone contacts or map updates. You know, those types of things. And, um, yeah, there's there's a lot more U-boats out there doing their U-boaty thing. Which is good. What do we got there? Just a little destroyer. There's no juicy military targets up here. It's just a bunch of escort ships. I mean, I, that, that makes sense, considering the largest threat facing the Royal Navy right now is the submarine. <clears throat> so, although, you know, that looks like a big fleet. I'm just not armed enough to take it on, I don't think. And it's kind of going the opposite direction. Our boat isn't doing the best when it comes to being ship shape. So um, we're just going to have to avoid all of these blues as best we can for as long as we can. I don't know why we're recharging the electric batteries while we're underwater. It seems a bit silly to me. Oh, oh. When I get in my cheaty view and go investigate another submarine. Hopefully they're not too deep. Let's zoom this in. Was there another submarine or was I just tripping balls? I may have just been tripping balls. <clears throat> <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you guys saw a submarine there, too. Um, for my own mental well-being, it's much appreciated. Alright, well, there is definitely one guy... ...close... ...somewhere. Yeah, seriously, like, that looks like... ...that's another submarine. Right over there. Oh! Hello? What are you doing on the surface? That seems dangerous, considering the amount of ships sailing around. But you're definitely a German U-boat. A little Type 7. <clears throat> well. I guess if he's on the surface, we could probably be on the surface, too. That should be the way I'm looking at this. We can have a little wave. And obviously, whatever crew is on this boat would be just tickled pink to see the Defiance rise up out of the water and just show up in his area of operations. He'd be like, oh damn. 
We're doing well today for sure. Right? I'd kind of like to see if I could follow this guy. Get a little U-boat wolf pack going on. But, um... Submarine sighted. It's one of ours, bearing... Whoa! One, six, sir! Are you just stopping right in front of me? I realize you probably want an autograph. This is not the way to go about it. Please tell me you're moving. Okay, good, you are. Now you just had to get close, make sure it was the Defiance. You should also have your deck crew out, Mon Capitan. Shut down diesel engines. I guess that's more French, but, um, yeah, whatever. Hold on a second, man. Right away, let me get through. Alright, you happy hunting, fellow submariner. Alright, guys, that's enough of a digression. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll be back when something actually exciting happens. So this has pretty much been my voyage up to this point. <laughs> um... We've hit about two or three destroyer patrols, a bunch of airplanes, and this is what the current destroyer patrol is doing. Um, they haven't visually seen me yet. We've been lucky in staying out of visual range. In fact, it is night now, so we might be able to sneak on past. I think we should be able to. Let's check the distance. Five kilometers. Even at night, that's not exactly far. But, if we scan in their general direction, we can't actually see them. So if we can't see them, they can't see us. At least, in theory, that's the way this works. But, yeah. It's been a bunch of these destroyers getting close to visual range, and then parking themselves in hours. In hours, just spinning in circles. And so I have a feeling this pattern will repeat itself. Oh. See, this time I didn't decide to submerge, and I'm okay with that idea. They are getting closer. But it's still night. So that's good. And as we can see, they kind of get close, and then they just turn away. I wonder if um, they're just tracking that other U-boat. This is looking dangerous. Is it though? No, not really. Oh, maybe. Maybe he finally saw us, at least one of them. <clears throat> There's the possibility of that. Oh. Of course, there's the greater possibility that he hasn't seen us. And he's just kind of doing his destroyer thing. Uh, needless to say, though, this is making the return to Lorient tedious, I think would be the word I'm looking for. Let's get back on the surface. And look at that, we might be in the clear now. Or not! That guy is coming up this way, but he'll turn away. Then we'll get another contact somewhere along the way. Where he's turning this way, and yet he'll turn away. Okay. So I think we're safe. I don't know, time will tell. Um, that guy's getting close. They're all getting close, but they're not... They're just not looking in the right direction. Which suits me just fine. I honestly just want to get back to port. That's kind of my big life goal at the moment. And, um... Yeah, anyway. Once we get back to port, we get refit and we get rearmed, we will head down south. I hope. So, uh, hopefully... The next time I see you guys, we'll have something a bit more exciting to show than me just running away from ships. Because I don't think that's very exciting. Anyway, we'll see you guys in a bit. Alright guys, so we made it safely back to port. And I was just going to go through and um, do the usual check for upgrades. And there's probably nothing to upgrade. And 
you know, get our ships sure set thing. and ready to go. What do we have in mind? Sure. What do you want? Sure. What do you want? Albrish consists of a layer of synthetic rubber sheets glued to the body of the U-boat using special adhesives. Much like an outer skin, in addition to its sound-absorbing properties, the coating also acts as a sound dampener. And um, lo and behold, it turns out we actually have things to upgrade. So first off, yeah, we're going to get that. That sounds great, and it'll make our U-boat look nice and sleek sure and dangerous. Um, secondly, I was going to load up with a bunch of T-3s, uh, but we got this, the T-1 Fat. A torpedo meant to be used when heavy escort screens make it impossible to approach the target. Steam-powered fat torpedoes can be set to take a ladder shape trajectory through a convoy, hopefully hitting something. Make sure it's not you. I don't understand what that means, but I want to find out. So we're going to put a fat torpedo. We're not going to put a fat torpedo in tube one, are we not? There we go. We're going to put a fat torpedo in tube one. And then um, we'll keep the other three steam torpedoes in. And then we'll just use up. No, don't. There. Equip. Equip. And then we'll just use a bunch of T3s. Um, and I might actually swap those steam ones out too. We'll put in another fat. Yes. And then we'll put in some T3s. I'm not sure I like this idea of a ladder. I'm not sure I even understand this idea of a ladder-based sure. sure. patrol sure thingy. What do you have in mind? All right. I'll have the meals loaded onto your boat. Thank you. Welcome back, Heckler. Uh, let's Welcome just make back, sure Captain. there's nothing new popping up. So we've still got that mission, which we will request. We can see it's sending us down there. So that's a good sign. And then I think all the other missions we've completed. So that's good. We will have our ship Welcome back, Hep. fully refueled, covered in this new skin, which excites me. I like the idea of sound dampening working on my submarines. Um, Because, I mean, you know, that's going to be helpful. For sneaking past the ridiculous amount of convoys, uh, destroyer convoys, that are out, especially in the North Atlantic now. It's just not good. Um, you come across one of those and, you know, you're damaged and you just want to get home. It's not good because they'll follow you for a while. Returning anyway, escort sighted. Bearing one, zero. let's go ahead and get that down. Glad to see the periscopes are up. But we don't necessarily need them. Let's Minimum go ahead, slow, ahead. gentlemen. Ship sighted, bearing eight three. Shut down these lands. And how bad is it? It's October tenth, so we're burning through a bit more time than I really would like. We've got till the end of November to finish up this last mission. So um, yeah, not not the best timing left of course we've got the time machine i don't like using the time machine uh but if i have to obviously i think the crew of the defiance have sunk enough ships in the course of the war so far that they shouldn't necessarily be penalized just because we can't sink ships in the right location yeah some of you guys might disagree with me that's fine, you can disagree with me. But, um, yeah. For the sake of the series, I think it just makes sense. Come on. And we'll get out. <clears throat> Although I guess heading up that direction isn't really the way we want to go. We want to go this way because we're headed south. So we can split these nice French islands. And... Let's not necessarily... Yeah, I get that's where I'm supposed to go. Um, so we can just go right there. Easy. Let's not necessarily hug the coast of Morocco there. Yeah, we can probably kick this up to at least... We can probably do speed three now. And one last thing I just want to check out. 
Ooh, look at that. We're a much darker U-boat now. We got the emblem still up, which is perfect. But yeah, I think it's the full ship. Look at that. It's like we got a vinyl wrap for the Defiance. And now it's even more intimidating because it's darker. So if, you know, going through life has taught me anything, it's cool people wear dark clothes. And now our submarine's a cool person because it's wearing dark clothes. Anyway, we've seen L'Oreal 50 million times and a half. I don't think it's changed that much. And although it is beautiful, especially with the sun there, uh, I think... I will just cut the recording and uh, see you guys when I've got something interesting. Hopefully we'll be able to try out one of these fat torpedoes and just see what it does. Because, um, yeah, I'm excited to learn what a ladder pattern is. I've got an idea. We'll see if I'm right. And, um, yeah. See you guys in a bit. Alright, just a quick update. We are off the coast of what's labeled as Syria, but I, I don't, I'm no geography expert, but I'm pretty sure this isn't Syria. Uh, but we're just off the coast of Africa. And um, yeah, we got our patrol route set up, so we're just gonna sort of shuffle around here and see if we can't sink anything in the 50 kilometer radius that is, I believe, necessary for these patrol here missions. Um, chances are we're not gonna get anything and this will go away or pop up in a different location. Uh, hopefully, though, we do get something, and then we can start sinking things. All right, so uh, I'm going to get my patrol route set up. Well, I guess for those interested, I can show you what I do. I think I've covered this once before, but why not do it again? Bam, we're patrolling. It's just that easy. Occasionally I will drop down and hit the hydrophone and see if we can find anything. But for the most part, anything that comes through here we should see, and then we can sink it. So, keep your fingers crossed. See you guys in a bit. And just like that, bam, we've got a single merchant ship coming in. Uh, but the good thing is, uh, they'll be coming into our area of operations, which is exactly what we want them to do. So, we're going to need to set ourselves up a trap. And I find, when in a submarine, the best trap is always one that you set underwater. So we're just going to let time tick along here. Now, I guess I should have done some other sort of calculations here. They are 12 kilometers out. So, let's get rid of everything else. And um, I had myself going to speed two just to sort of cut down on fuel consumption and give me a much longer time in the area of operation. Oh, and that's not going to work, is it? We're going to need to go much quicker than that. We're going to need to go much quicker than that. Okay. Let's just check the old periscope. That's not a helpful location for me. And I don't think they're in visual range. Oh, there they are. Just on the horizon out there. And it looks like it might be a single ship. So, how are we going to catch these? this guy, you may ask? Well, we're going to surface the boat. And we can already see this guy complaining how close are we now five kilometers out still not close enough for a torpedo shot and now I mean we're close enough to use a deck gun I would imagine right Probably. Well, we certainly can't get a shot with a torpedo. So. Oh, up the ladder. Here we go. Not, oh, ooh, that sun is bright. It's a beautiful day out here. Excuse me, gentlemen. The sea is looking extra blue today. 
Let's go ahead and load up our high explosive shells. And we know this guy is about 2.9 kilometers out. And I think once the wave is done blocking my view, that should have been a hit. That was definitely a hit. So as long as these waves don't block the shots, which they might be, we should be able to take this guy down without issue. The only problem is actually watching this thing go down is going to be a bit of a pain considering the seas today. And I mean, I guess we are going freaking full speed, ahead. full speed ahead. That could be causing some of the wave issues. Not all of them, of course. And the boat is rocking. Come on. There we go. It's nice. You can't fire while a wave's over top of you, which is frustrating, but realistic enough for me to be like, okay, I, I get it. I don't imagine any deck gun on a ship could fire submerged. Correct me if I'm wrong, of course, please. But, um, yeah, I don't think that's the case. Anyway, this guy is looking like a fairly large enough freighter, but he is alone, which is frustrating. Uh, hopefully, though, sink this guy, it'll actually move the mission progress up a bit. We're not in the designated mission area, but we are patrolling where the mission told us to, so I figure that's probably the best bet to make sure that we're going to actually get credit for this kill and not just renown. Which, to be fair, my ridiculous renown did make sure we could afford the wonderful vinyl wrap on the Defiance. Am I shooting too low? There we go. That's definitely hitting. Yeah, that's a big explosion. There we go, now we just gotta fire off as many rounds as we can. Oh, look at that. Mission accomplished. Well done, crew. Let me get up to the conning tower and then we'll fly on over and take a look. Ooh, that sun. It's a bright day out here today, gentlemen. We can also probably cut our speed. Slow speed ahead. But let's see what we can't learn about this ship. It is a British ship. It is a fairly big cargo ship, too. And as for damage below the waterline, I don't think we got any any sort of damage below the waterline. This is purely high explosive shells causing a lot of damage. Which, hey, I'm okay with. And it didn't advance the mission thingy. I mean, we don't have to patrol here anymore which is nice, so we got rid of that, but as far as the BDU is concerned, we still haven't done anything. So, it's going to be back to this area, and hopefully we can find a convoy to send to the bottom of the ocean. See you guys in a bit. Alright guys, so, it is now November the 2nd, done a full crisscross patrol of this circle, which is pretty much this circle um, <clears throat> 700 kilometers long at its widest point although I guess it's a circle so it's always at its widest point but if you're traveling you know the full length of it uh, and we got nothing no contacts no nothing we got tons coming through outside we've had some over here we've had some up through here but that guy's not going to be coming through. We had some over here. That's a large convoy. Hold on. How bad is our fuel? It's tough. Because like I say, that guy's not going to be coming through our area of operations. But he's close. 
and if he's identifying as a large convoy, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. Stop the engines, wait for that guy to get closer, see if we can't sink some ships. That'll actually count. If not, I don't know what to do except wait out the, um, the time machine. I mean, that's what we're going to have to do. So, uh, let's see if we can't get bag ourselves some of these ships. They're a long way away. So, um, I won't make you guys wait. I'll have to wait, though. So, um, I'll be back when, hopefully, we've got a big convoy in sight. So, I think the definition of insanity is going out and doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. That's exactly what a, another large convoy... <clears throat> I don't know when I spotted those guys. I'll likely never be able to catch them. Right? Well! See, the only thing is, I know I'm going to go, I'm going to shoot it up, and it's not going to count for anything. But if it does count... Well, no, because, I mean, this ship that was attached to the mission didn't even count for anything. Regardless, uh, this recording session has really taken a lot out of me. Um a long amount of sailing and just just watching time acceleration go by so i'm going to leave the video here for today it's kind of a short episode and i do apologize for that it's also an episode where really nothing happened we sunk a ship i guess at least we sunk a ship but um you know one ship i'm kind of used to to getting a few more kills than that i have a feeling it's just the bdu wanting to uh, set the Defiance and her crew up with a desk job during the war or something. I don't know, because they're sending us to the middle of nowhere where no ships are coming through. Ships are coming on all sides, but not through our specific little mission area. So what can you do? Little does BDU know, we can cheat the game, and I've got no problems doing that. So we're still running on map location issues. I think that's still a good name for it. Anyway, that's enough jibber-jabbering for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thumbs up if you did. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.